bells and all of a sudden we looked at the clock and we're running late. So thank you all for joining us right on time, of course. I am here with the amazing Sean Lardo, who has an amazing beard that's going to be leaving his face soon. Hold on. I, I, <laughs> let's get that done. I'm like, like, I need a comb to like primp and. Well, I also, I mean, I even have a beard. Let's be clear. I, I have the beard too. <laughs> So yes, I am high maintenance at this whole thing. Um, that's because I don't have any hair on my head. Let's be honest. This is why I'm doing it. So it, it all migrated. It went from the top of your head to the chin. It ran down my face. It absolutely <laughs> did. It's not. <laughs> all so, right. Yes. So we are here to talk about pitch it. But yes. before we jump into that, let's introduce ourselves because I, I don't know. I feel like most people probably know either you or I or both of us. Mm -hmm. um, but who are you? What's your role with ConnectWise and IT Nation Connect and Pitch It? And then I'll do the same and we'll go from there. Sure. Uh, my name is Sean Lardo. I am the evangelist for the ConnectWise economy. Um, and and I'll, I'll even tell you what that means and why we call it the economy. Um, we made a realization some years ago that as as the industry was evolving and changing and ConnectWise is growing and acquiring companies and um, we're no longer just, you know, when you look at ConnectWise 15 years ago and 10 years ago, the story started to change from being, you know, I mean, at one point ConnectWise was an MSP and then it turned into a, a SaaS provider at some point, right? And so we became a software SaaS provider. We got it. And then we started to acquire things like Evolve Pair Group and offer help desk support and and we then had, um, we have professional services, so all these different things. And now we added on something like, the, we have the marketplace with all our vendors, that all of our sponsors, uh, and the invent program. And then also now pitch it, where we invest and give away a grand prize to emerging technologies to help, to help the companies or to help MSPs, hopefully, you know? Um, so ConnectWise has become an IT supply chain company essentially now, you know, uh, because it covers all the, between product and software and ser services and, 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 and hardware even to some degree with our vendors, you know? So they, we decided that we're going to start talking about the economy itself as, as opposed to talking about ecosystem only, talk, even not, I shouldn't say only like I'm downplaying it, but instead of saying ecosystem or, or community, it's now also an economy because there are a lot of transactions being taken place and people are growing as a result of it. So- And how long have you been inside of the channel? <sighs> well, I accidentally ended up in a channel about 20 years ago. Okay. Um, before I knew what that even meant, I was a direct sales rep for a software company. Um, and I was working on a very big deal and they were like, and I, the deals with Thomson Reuters I was selling to, and they were like, we're signing. I'm like, awesome. I'm gonna get a huge commission. And then they're like, they, they came back. Oh my goodness. We didn't, we have to sign with a reseller because we have a contract that requires us to buy all of our stuff through them. And I was like, a what? <laughs> Uh oh, what? <laughs> and I said, you know, what does that mean exactly? They told me, and it was uh, the company was Soft Choice, and Soft Choice is a huge software sales company re that resell for all Microsoft. And and, and literally, it cut my commission in twenty five percent, maybe more. I forget. I, I cried though. Um, and yeah. so what I did though is I reinvested that time. Once I realized what they did, they never. I never dealt with them before that, and I ended up using them to my advantage. And I would help enable them to sell more of our stuff and because they had a larger audience than I did. And I, I end up, you know, in the end, I end up becoming more of their channel manager. They never really, they had a channel program of sorts, but because it was still infancy for that and in a lot of ways. Um, and so, yeah, I ended up being in channel then. So do you remember when ConnectWise used to talk about the 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 like United Office or whatever like they they would have like that um mm -hmm. overhead view where they had all the little offices all the little cubicles and this is you know this is our our, our quoting tool and this is our RMM and that that's probably been 15 years ago yeah. maybe not quite yeah, yeah. and so, it's changed it, so much I mean, changed. it had to change didn't it i mean at this point you're looking at the way the world works and and before COVID, but ever, especially since COVID, like I sat down with Carolyn April from CompTIA. We, and she, she, she did, she interviewed me for a uh, partner experience that she, a report she was putting together. And, and I talked about from my perspective, I watched it happen because I live in Pittsburgh. I watched FedEx downsize their corporate their offices. Right. Uh -huh. Okay. And we'll use them as an example. Everybody was like, we got to get rid of office space because we can't all be together because of COVID. So everybody's going remote, whatever. And how many, and, and how are we going to manage them? And is it easier to manage 
a third party and let them manage their own people where you have no upfront cost by, you know, hiring on a reseller than it is to actually provide the cost for onboarding a new hire, the office space or, or the resources to work from home or whatever. And then also, and can you, and, and a manager to manage them, can you do all that? And so I, you know, it's, I think it's now, and, and if you look at Jay McBain's reports, he always talks about the fact that there's like 80 plus percent of the world's revenue runs through indirect and channels. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if that doesn't tell you the importance of it at this point, we all had to morph. We couldn't say, let's, let's keep hiring a large direct sales team, you yes. know, cause that, that, that didn't make sense. Got it. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. And all, all of that. And I'm Jennifer Bleem. I am the cybersecurity Sherpa. Um, that is like the world's longest introduction. That, that should be on the street. And we were worried if we could get an hour out of this, right? <laughs> we could probably talk until like, tomorrow. We are not going to have problems filling time. That's for sure. But we want to make sure it's as valuable as it can be for everybody who's joining us. So um, I'm Jennifer Bleem. I'm the cybersecurity Sherpa, and I help unlock the sales genius inside of MSPs and MSP salespeople. So um, I am a sales coach inside of the industry. Love what I do. Love watching my clients grow. And we're here talking about Pitch It, which really is at its core a sales product, a sales program, kind of. Well, so, ultimately, yes. Ultimately, so, you're absolutely right. Okay, so tell me what pitch it is, and then I'm hoping to throw you for a couple of curveballs because you don't know what questions I've got in store. I have no clue what you're going to ask, but that's perfect. <laughs> I like that. That makes it that makes it more fun to me. So yes. pitch it. Um, it. The ultimate goal. Well, take, take it before the goal. The ultimate goal for the individual is it's like a Shark Tank concept ultimately. So. In the um, which will the, the finals take place at IT Nation Connect actually, uh, so my, my my plug is exactly that on the first day of IT IT Nation Connect on the ninth at three p.m. Eastern Standard, the three finalists will be competing against each other for the grand prize of seventy thousand dollars. That's that is it. November ninth, Wednesday, November ninth. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so that's the first thing that. Uh, I'll say about that, but is it, that's a Shark Tank concept. However, the whole program itself is not Shark Tank like. So, what the goal of it is for us as an organization is um, we made three promises last year. You know, easier to do business with, invest even more in the partner growth, and more innovations faster. That was the ConnectWise promise. Okay, and uh, this sort of emulates a lot of it because well, the innovation piece is very simple. What we do is we're looking for all emerging technology startup companies to come to us apply to be part of this. It's free to apply. It's free to be part of the program itself. And we're looking for partners that, again, back to the other promises, even providing more innovations faster. These are emerging technologies. They are, they're already doing it. Um, but we want to bring it back to where it's something that is going to help our community. These are, these are companies that integrate with us and make it easier for, uh, for other business, these MSPs to grow essentially. Um, and that, that's it. So that, that's the bottom line. And this is year three. Five. 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 Wow. It was kind okay. of an unknown for a while. And yeah. Okay. So, so obviously uh, some of it is altruistic, help the MSPs grow your mm -hmm. marketplace. Like those are all, I love the strategy there. One thing that you did, you're doing this year, and I believe you did it last year was assign the finalists to a business coach to work with them. So how did you ever do pitch it without assigning them to a business coach? <laughs> so, so, th so this year, the business coach assignment was a little bit different, but at large every year before that, the business coach was whoever was running the program. So for, in this case, I run the program as of now. So, but I, on it, I don't have time. I would not be able to give them the time they deserve. Sure. So what we, so what we did this year, and I'll get to your, to your, to your question. I, I won't uh, let you forget. <laughs> I, I won't either. So what we did this year is we assigned each the three finalists to an individual business coach, which is um, a previous winner of Pitch It. So like, so we have Gene uh, Rich from Traceless. He won last year's Pitch It. So he's a coach for one of the teams. Jameson yeah. West, mm -hmm. he's won and he's judged. He's a coach. And then Callan Sapien, which he was part of the winning company, but then also worked for ConnectWise after that too. So it was very... Very convenient for him. He understands everything about it. So those people, are, and, and plus they're also very good at um, understanding the space, understanding how to, they, they understand everything. And so the ultimate goal for them is to help these teams to polish off, polish their pitch. Now, keep in mind when they pitch, this is the best part of this is that 
you know, you've been in sales for a long time. So, you know, you're pitching to a customer, you're talking about your differentiators, right? As, as the service you're offering. Whereas yes. in this case, they're going to talk about that, but also they're talking to what they would say to investors and to be ah. acquired as well. So there is a very robust pitch involved in this. In very limited time, that's the thing is like they they only have, you know, about five to six minutes to pitch. And then they get beat down on questions from the Shark Tank, um, which will be Jay McBain, Allison Francis, and, uh, and oh my Lord. Juan Fernandez, which is a good friend of mine. I can't remember all of a sudden. Um, but yeah, the, those are the judges. So like, and that's a really good thing because they are all from different perspectives. Now, yes. to your question though, how do we do before that? Well, the thing is we did it with, we had the one person that would run this stuff um, and they would do a couple workshops with them. But as a group, as a group as a, of finalists. Exactly. Um, and, may, and maybe, and, and maybe some sidebar conversations, like if they wanted to do some things, but, but at large though, that's what it was. And where, where we changed it this year and, and, and ConnectWise really doubled down on their investment this year because we put together a team of us and we ran a six week incubator program. So, and we used a lot of our own resources from like Arlen Sorensen and those guys from Evolve to talk about modes, modes theory and whatnot to, um, some of our, our product marketing director to, I mean, we had probably. 40 to 50 people involved in this from ConnectWise side. So, I mean, I don't, I couldn't tally up what that cost was, but right. you know, we put a lot into plus the winning prize of, and, and we're discounting sponsorship for anybody that became a, that was a fine, that was involved in the competition. Anything they sponsor from us, they get discounts on too, which as you know, ConnectWise does not discount. No. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So don't talk about the grand prize quite yet because yep. we're going to get okay. there, but yes. okay. So did you assign coaches to them to up level, to make, to make the playing field even a tighter race or was it simply a, a constraint of resources that, you know, if one person is supporting three um, up and coming vendors, sometimes that's a heavy lift. So what was the, the, um, the motivation behind assigning a one-on-one -on -one coach? That's a great question. So, um, so two parts of this for one is, They've had a different coach every week during the accelerator program, which were the cameo coaches to discuss multiple uh, var varied areas of business, whether it was like mergers and acquisition, operations, sales, marketing, whatever it was. We, we actually had a, every week we had a workshop with coaches. Then within the 16 weeks, we had 18 teams that did this, 18 vendors that were in it. So each week they would get a lesson because, I mean, you know, because you have your own business and you've worked for businesses and you ran your own business, right? And, yes. and you miss a lot of things you don't see. Of especially course, when you're in the yeah. box. So this was, and this was in the hopes of, I mean, it's only 16 weeks of this. I and mean, it's only one, an hour session. We know that, but at least it'll give them a way to, these are business owners. So they're already thinking in some sort of way and hopefully it helps them to acknowledge that there's a gap somewhere and to fill it. Right. So that's, that was the hope of that. And plus get them more aware of how they're going to position themselves also. Right. And so um, they, they are presenting live in front of the entire IT nation crowd. So several connect. Weeks. Yes. Three okay. will, but the 18, we had the preliminaries with, uh, with Matt Solomon on the channel right. program. And the whole goal was to get them to the point of being, uh, ready to speak there to win, to be three finalists, the head coaches, it was to help them up their game as well. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing that I wanted to make sure that, that we wanted to make sure they were able to do is be successful after this, even, you know, yeah, you've, I mean, you've watched American Idol and you've seen somebody win and, they, and you receive them again, right? Yes. That's not good for business. That's not good for any of us, right? That's, it's almost like onboarding a new hire that just never pans out and they were great. You know, we want right. to make sure they're going to do something after. Let's park on that American Idol thing for just a minute, because we've also seen the American Idol people who get up and they grab a microphone and you're like, who told you you could sing? Uh, like Your someone story. needed to say to you, 15 years ago, Jennifer, that voice belongs in the shower. Please never go to the microphone <laughs> again, right? Like, so did you have a screening process to get to down to the 17? So, so yes, we, we vetted. A, so, I mean, we vetted through a couple of layers of things based off of, I mean, well, for like, for instance, we had, we had a t-shirt vendor that applied for like, obviously that's not factor. So okay, we, that was an easy one. Right. Um, How are you going to integrate that into the marketplace? <laughs> yeah, right. It is, I mean, I'm trying, I was, I was really thinking about it, to be honest. I was like, I right. think we could do it, but I couldn't figure it out. Um, but we, so we, we vetted, a, we vetted several. Um, we got, we got rid of the ones that didn't make sense. 
And then we, and then we also, but we also dove into the websites too. We started looking at what their offer was. We made sure that they understood even who we were. Part of the questioning was, or have you ever worked with ConnectWise? You know, and the, the good thing is the, the win-win in this, in our space that we're in is that you see a lot of these vendors were MSPs and that happens often. Yes, it does. So they understand what they needed. They were solving their problem and they were like, their only question was, how do I make this applicable to everybody else? And really the only thing that's keeping from making it applicable to everybody else is just being able to scale it. Mm -hmm. It's usually not the actual offer because typically the solution is something that most people will need. That's why they built it, you know? So it was, so it was, it was easy because as we were looking through the list of applicants, we we're like, oh, that's, they're, they're an Evolve. Oh, they're a customer right now. Oh, you know, and, and, and so it made it real easy. I mean, at, for instance, like John, look at John from Sassio. They just were acquired. So congratulations, John, yes. for the Obvic acquisition. Um, he was one of the contestants. Right. You know, so he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's involved with. So when we looked at their sites and we looked at, and they had to answer what they do. They had to provide a solution to what they do. We, right. We, we, were, we were pretty stringent on that. So. Okay. So, so let's go the other direction. So, so you were able to screen people out that perhaps didn't belong there either because they were a t-shirt vendor, or maybe there were people that just didn't quite belong there yet. Their, their right. product wasn't quite ready for prime time. I mean, these, sure. these or it wasn't even ready. valuable or right. it wasn't even valuable. Let's be honest. Yes. I mean, just cause you have a great idea for you doesn't, again, doesn't mean it's scalable or, or applicable to everybody sometimes. So we, so we dismissed those ones. We let them know, Hey, sorry, you're not accepted, you know? Sure. Um, and then we ended up, we actually had 19 total. We, we accepted one had to, had to bail out. We, we had serious roles. Like we had 16 weeks of people that were allocating their time and do, like donating their time to this. So people had to be there for workshops. They yeah. had to, they had to be developing, evolving everything else. And, and so if they couldn't make it and they had to stop doing it, we had, to, we had to draw some line in the sand. So, but we ended up with 18. And all 18 went through the whole went through the whole program, uh, and they very tight knit group. They, it, it, I'll, I'll tell you, it was uh, it was fun watching because they were all supposed to be competing, and we were doing like webinars. When I was bringing them on, they were supposed to like fight with each other, and they were so complimentary. And I'm like, stop, you're, you know, you guys are competing, right? And they're like, no, <laughs> Walter asked the video, he's so good at the. I'm like, are you, dude? Stop saying he's so good. And he's like, right. no, he, you know, Adam is such you're a nice so guy. His product is great. I'm like, shut up. You're doing the you're wrong thing. You're supposed to treat him like the enemy. <laughs> yeah. Like what are we doing here guys? Yeah. So it was really fun to watch the, the synergies and yes, synergy, which is a great buzzword. I hate it, but whatever. Um, I, I liked watching it happen and, and they all worked well together. Okay. So I want to talk about the, the vendors that were not the 19. So you know that there are vendors out there that should have applied or could have applied and thought about it. And I want to park on imposter syndrome for a second. So I, this is one of those yes. questions you had no idea was coming. Um, but there are up and coming vendors who just believe they're not ready. They're not good enough. Maybe next year, maybe in three years, maybe when I have insert yeah, whatever, right. uh, the multi-tenant dashboard, like whatever it is, the thing. Um, and so, so do you, first of all, do you agree with that, that there are vendors out there that should apply maybe next year? Hint, yes. hint. Um, and then what would be your advice? Like we've both been in, we're seasoned professionals at this point. Um, yes. What would be your advice specific to imposter syndrome and just the, I'm not not good enough. I'm not ready yet. That, that's, that's a, that's a very good question. Uh, yes, they should apply. First off, I think the one thing I, and I've worked with five startup companies in my life now. And what I noticed about all of them is their failure to launch. They mm -hmm. don't want to, they don't want to birth their baby because they're afraid it's ugly, right? It's things like that they have. And it's like, you don't know until you actually people see it. Right. And, and so at the worst case scenario, let's say it's not fully baked. You go through a program that's an incubator program with us, at least you can start to get more people's heads involved to give you feedback, you know, give you thoughts. Because if you're sitting there by yourself in a room and you're talking to nobody else, you're making as much progress as you'll allow yourself to make, which again, yes. you haven't launched. So you haven't made any progress. It's over. So I do suggest that you do so because you don't know. You, you don't, you, you really don't. You have to, I guess this, the advantage I've had myself professionally is I've always had the sales mentality. So I've always been out there and learning and willing to jump into any room. And I thought, and it was always, you know, there was always a reckless abandonment to a degree because 
there, with no risk comes no reward. And I think most really seasoned and good salespeople know this. It's it's, but it's also part of our chemistry. It's not. Right. It's not, it's not a learned thing. It's, I mean, you, you, the only thing that's learned is how much further you can push it as you keep pushing. Right. Well, I was going to say, I think to some extent it is learned because at 25, I was certainly not willing to just jump in the deep end and, you know, I'll sure. either win or I'll learn. That was not my mentality. I wanted, Well, maybe at 25, yeah. but yeah. compared you to your friends that don't do this, right? Yes. Were you yes. a little bit more daring than them? Probably. That's the, yes. that's it's, the chemistry. That's the innate ability we have of the ignorance is bliss concept. It's so funny, but when we were in the green room before we went live, you were talking about just the logistics of running an event and planning an event like IT Nation Connect. Yeah. So I have my own event. We're going to have 150 people in the room, maybe 10, 11 sponsors. So significantly smaller than an IT Nation yes. Connect. But I also have a significantly smaller team. You know, there's about three or four of us. And we just make it happen. Like we, we spin yeah. up a monday.com project board and we just chunk away at the tasks. And last year was fantastic. 2023 is going to be amazing. The speakers we're lining up are great, but it's, it's to me, not a big deal, but I was at a, an event with some friends and my ladies were like, you stress me out. And I'm like, wait, but like my, my posts. And they're like, no, 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 your posts are fine. But like, if I was in your shoes, like you published a book, you hit the bestseller list, you're on podcasts, you have an event, yep. you have a team, you have to pay their salaries. And I'm like, yeah, uh huh. Like, it's, <laughs> it's just like, it just is, it's no big deal. It's um, different though, right? How much yes. different is, again, that's, that's my point. Like how many people should do it and how many people won't because they don't understand, they, they don't understand that they're usually the ones blocking themselves. Yes. You know, I mean, I that's the that. truth of the matter. And, and by the way, my friends and family say the same thing to me. They don't understand how I function. Like, they're just like, I don't, my mother's like, I don't understand what you do. I don't even want to yeah. know because it gives me anxiety. If you yes. tell me what you do. <laughs> so. When I, when I traveled to Australia with who was then ConnectWise, my mom was so freaked out. She's like, how are you going to get around? And I'm like, okay, so first of all, they speak English. Uh, and secondly, my cell phone GPS works. Well, it actually didn't when I landed. It wasn't, it didn't work right for like a day. And I made the mistake of telling her that. And I think she was convinced I was going to be dead before my cell phone started working. <laughs> and instead I wandered around Sydney and just explored. And I'm like, it's, it's okay. Like, if I get lost, I ask for directions. Like none of these things are, are insurmountable. So I love it. Absolutely. Okay, so but it tell us it, it is. So yes. everybody should apply first. Yes. I mean, the worst case scenario is you're told no, that you didn't make it. Best case scenario is you do make it and have to go through the incubator program where you'll pick up very good information on how to be acquired, how to present, how to how to put together a marketing sales process to grow, how to put together a channel program, how to talk about integrations and do integrations. So all that is so important for you guys to, to understand that it's a way to grow, period. Yes, That's it. I, I love it. And I mean, the the amazing, amazing things happen when you step into discomfort, when you step out of your comfort zone, you ask for advice from people who maybe they're not even more experienced than you, but they simply aren't stuck in the weeds. Like we all right. need those outside advisors. Absolutely. So well, what, how, how many of us know everything? The fact is I, I go into a room and I, 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 I am more than willing to be the dumbest person in the room. It benefits yes. me. The more, the dumber I am in the room, the more I'm benefited. The rest of none of you are at that point because yes. you're all so smart. You're just talking about everything. And I'm like, I'm learning the entire time. You're just yeah. saying things you've already known. And also each person in that room brings a different element of of what they're good at, their experience and their success. And I'm just there to absorb that and, 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 and put it together. It's just building blocks for me. And you're, you're absolutely right. You can't have progress without discomfort. It's a fact. I love it. Okay. So how, and this is a little bit self-serving, but how do you think the pitch it program would go without the guidance of the coaches and the support team? Well, I don't know that it would go well. <laughs> um, well, you know, a couple of things is back to going in that room and there's always different expertise. That's one thing, right? Um, the other thing is part of the part of the challenge and you come like you came into this space like I did. And at one point, what did we know? We we knew what was in front of us only. Yes. And that's it. That was over. Right. So how do you navigate even? How do you navigate a space like this? If you talk about the ConnectWise community, look how large it is. And the ConnectWise community is only one of many communities too. 
and, and it's complementary to others and it overlaps and we know that. So, you know, like I was in a meeting today and we were talking about the fact that our cybersecurity sales, we now have like, you know, nine, 10,000 partners doing it. Okay. That's just in cybersecurity from us. Look at the rest. I mean, that's ridiculous, yeah. right? So if you're going to, you, you know, it's, it's a couple parts of um, learning the, the gaps that they should know about your business, but learn how to just like get, take it on a new job. How do you learn the ins and outs of your new job? Even if you did the same exact job at another company, you still have to learn about the dynamic, the culture, the processes, the people. You got to learn those things. How are you going to learn those without a guide? Awesome. You know, okay. So. I love it. Okay. So for those that are just joining us, we are talking about Pitch It, uh, which is coming up during as part of IT Nation Connect. Sean, give me the dates again. I cannot keep numbers in my head to save my life. <laughs> I practice this like every day, so I'm good. Uh, so IT Nation Connect is November 9th to November 11th. Uh, Pitch It, the finals, will happen on November 9th from 3 to 4 Eastern Standard on that day. Um, they also, by the way, the finalists did sponsor a pre-day starting at 8.30 a.m. that morning. So from 8.30 to 12.30, they will be doing a full workshop for the three finalists. So if you guys are there and can make it, I would suggest you do it. They're, it, they're offering it for free. So we're talking about three startup companies that invested a lot of time and a lot of money into making sure they can deliver a very good offer and a very good way to communicate with everybody. So I hope people take advantage of it. Amazing. Okay. So when they present, it's a Shark Tank style presentation in front of yes. the entire IT Nation Connect folks, plus the judges. The judges are the ones I imagine making the ultimate decisions. Absolutely. Yeah. But they're speaking to two audiences, really, because they, they've they got the potential investors in the room and mm -hmm. they've got the potential clients, the MSPs that are in the room. So Absolutely. how much, and they've got five to seven minutes. So yeah. do you think they're going to split their time? I mean, whether we, we sense it or not, but talk to both of those audiences for half the time, speak I don't directly know. to the MSPs, any thoughts there? I mean, uh... Judging from the sessions I've been in, and, and I stay out of it now because the, I let the coaches do their job, right? Um, and they're really good. It's not like it's not like I'm going to teach them anything. They've all won these things, and they've all had successful businesses. So, uh, you know, I I, I think the the art that I've noticed, and it's something I think solely wholeheartedly, is that you a lot of it overlaps in some capacity, right? Because you know, investors they want to know, okay, what problems do you solve? So do the clients, right? And then they and the you know. The only other difference comes into play is the clients already know what the market size because they're talking to client, their clients, they know what they have. And, and there's also very myopic for them where investors are like, well, what's the, what's the market size? What's the potential? That's the only difference in that, right? That scenario. But when you start talking about the differentiators, the differentiators are, you know, on one side is, uh, we'll, we'll just make up something. We'll say, you know, support. We have 24 seven support. They don't. That's a, you know, that works for the client, for the investor. They're like, cool, you have support. I don't really care. Right. The difference for them is how are you financially? Yes. Are, are there other investors? Do you got to buy them out? Do we got to, you know, they want to know those things. They want to know. What's the total it, addressable market? Like all exactly. of those things the investor it, cares about. Yeah. Correct. But then you talk about integrations. They both want to know about that because they want to know what sandbox they're playing in for both. Mm -hmm. One wants the, the user, the MSP wants to know the integrations because they want to know how easy it is to work with them. The investor wants to know because they want to know what the sandbox looks like where they're integrating. You know, um, as a matter of fact, one of our contestants, uh, Humanize IT with Adam, he and I were talking about it the, on, a, on, a, on a webinar one day, um, and we were just talking about the ability for the integration. He said, you know, I was going to go after like other like Salesforce and he goes, but really with ConnectWise, once I did the integration and was part of the MM program, the size of MSPs there, I could, sh I could fish here for the next five years, essentially. And, you know, and it's true. So, and, and that's the other thing. I, that's what it comes down to strategy. So now again, overlap. If I'm an MSP, I want to know, oh, you want to get them with ConnectWise? Great. How, how far are you going to go? Are you going to go away? Right. Right. And he's going to say no. If I'm an investor, oh, you're going to invest in, you're going to do ConnectWise? Well, what's again, what's the addressable market in there? How, how many things are you going to do? How does it make it more efficient? How much does it save me on costs? The more we automate this too. They're going to, so you can balance some things out. There's going to be, but there's going to be a couple of segues into, like if I'm telling the story, I would tell a story on two I would actually acknowledge, I would probably sound off. This is for you MSPs first I'm going to talk to. And then halfway through, 
This is for you investors. Just right. so everybody understands who I'm talking to at that point. Right. So there's no confusion. Or even each bullet, uh, each bullet point would be, hey, MSPs, here's what you need to know. Now, vendors, yes. here's what you care about. Maybe this. do a side-by-side -side -side chart with some checklist right. or whatever, anything. But as long as I can visually show you and talk you through, and I know, and you know that I'm talking to you, that's so you're listening, your ears perk up. Because once you don't think you're talking to me, um, once you don't think I'm talking to you, you're going you're gonna to start daydreaming and miss what I have to say. Right. You know, but but again, though, our three judges, the nice thing about them is they represent the different factions of thought, which is nice. You know, you have Jay McBain, that's the analyst of analysts. He mm -hmm. he crunches numbers. He gets excited on percentages and and he's going to break that down with them. And he understands his channel. Then you have Allison Francis that literally writes about everything and interviews every company. So no. And, and so she's a huge part of culture. And, and also what's the future investments? She talks about those things. And then you have Juan Fernandez that is all about channel growth. And, and culture. So, and he's been part of, some, they've all been part of successful companies. And, and, and so I couldn't ask for a better, better crop of judges too. So, you know, I, I hope that the coaches are preparing them for the judges. That's all I can say. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some of the foundational elements of a pitch. So um, you mentioned solving a problem. Please, please, please tell the MSPs what problem you solve. Don't talk bits and bites and speeds and feeds. Yeah, right. What's their pain? Answer their pain. Yes. Just talk about the pain. Hey, don't you get sick of working late night because of this stupid X? Right. Whatever the X is. Yes. Well, here is why to solve that. People, people get mad at me because I say watch infomercials because I think infomercials are some of the best things at delivering good content when they talk about, hey, do you have this problem? Of course, they, they're obnoxiously, outrageously. Sure. But like they they got the the spray paint, uh, whatever tape stuff as the black stuff they, pay, they they put on the boat, they put on the gutter and they show yes. like the boat sinking. Well, first off, I'm not going to get my boat while it's sinking. I'm going to kind of know. So like, but it shows you the problem already. It shows you the pain. And, and it, it really, they really, infomercials show the pain in an obnoxious, over-the-top way. Um, and so it's easy to villainize, oh, I don't want to, you know, show the the problem in a cartoonish yeah. manner. But nobody's buying a piece of technology. They are buying a solution to a problem. They're Absolutely. buying the end result that that solution brings them. Peace of mind, yeah. time with family, increased revenue, whatever it is. So. Yeah. Okay, so if you if you think I don't know the last time you've heard the three finalists give a pitch or talk about their solution, but if you think about where they are now as opposed to where they were when they entered the program, are you oh, yeah. seeing? It? Tell me about that transformation. So, I mean, the last time I saw them pitch was in their preliminaries. Okay. That was uh, the last the last uh, couple of days of August because we made the we. We announced the three finalists um, the second week, the second week of September. Um, but uh, and but I can talk about from day one when we met them till you know to the preliminaries, uh, and and they can tell you themselves, and they they'll be happy to tell you. Like they, some of the things they got much better at was positioning themselves. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, getting to the point faster. Um, because that's hard for some people, right? Yes. It's very difficult to get there, it, especially when you're the owner. Because this, again, this is your baby, and you want to tell yes. them. Yes. Oh, they they walked when they were nine months. They were early. They the first time they said a word was mom. You know, they wanted to, and they want to tell you what happened at each experience. And we were at the park when she said mom. It was amazing. You know, <laughs> and it, it, nobody cares. I just want to know that the right. kid can walk. Yeah. <laughs> the kid, is the kid going to get the score or not? That's what I care about. You know. And so they learned how to how to get rid of the, the, the nonsensical part. Not that it's nonsense, but it's just not needed and get to the point of, Hey, we, this is the pain that we were working on that we were solving for. And this is how we solved it. And they were able to, and cause when we did the preliminaries, they only had five minutes to pitch everything. Right. So five minutes and they were done for the preliminaries done. So they had to go back to their pitch decks and strip it down to what was pertinent. No fluff. Didn't have time for fluff. And, and and so and then the other thing that I that we saw a good a good change in was some of them would just base it off conversations, and not have a presentation deck of any sort. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if you use Canva or PowerPoint, I don't care. But people learn from different ways. There's not one. Me, I will hear you, but I also want to see things too. If you have a picture, I remember that. Yes. You know, and also a a, a presentation deck keeps me on track. 
Otherwise your conversation goes completely sideways and you don't ever cover what's important. And if, and, and when you put together a presentation deck, it forces you to answer your own questions too. Yes. Like, Oh, I didn't even answer if we have support. I didn't even answer. Wait, wait, are, are we even a software? Where's a say in that? I don't, you know, right. again, <laughs> these are problems. So they, so you could see the night and day as far as, and the progression from the, they became more structured. They became more well-pointed. Uh, they just, it, it, so those are two major pieces right there. And, and they also, and what they pointed to was more value add, not just basic jargon. And like, we use this technology because nobody cares what technology you use. They I care the problem. problem. I don't care what it is. It could be a freaking dump truck. What hamsters that are running the wheel. I don't care. As long as it gets the dump truck, gets the stuff out of my yard and dumps it somewhere else. That's all I care about. So I love your point about brevity because I was I was just I worked with two of my private clients this week about brevity and we were literally scripting their their introductory like okay after we warm up and we talk about sports or the weather or whatever we're doing now we're actually into the sales call itself and I said tell me what you're doing now because one thing I don't do is give people a canned presentation to to pitch because nobody pitches the same as anybody else so I help my my private clients take best practices and take what they're doing and morph it. And so I, I've got this people, people love it until they realize what I'm doing. And then it's a little bit obnoxious. I will just let them talk and they will yeah. just monologue and they will be eight or 10 minutes in. And they'll be like, I feel like I'm rambling. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, you hit the rambling point about five and a half minutes ago. <laughs> um, and, and of course I'm kind about it, but I'm like, okay, hold on you don't have to say everything in the first five minutes. Like, no. what are the, like, let's get pithy. Let's get concise. Let's make sure yeah. what we're talking about is truly valuable because there is the need for humans, for all of us humans to fill empty space. Like most of us are not real comfortable with silence. And so we just feel like we have to go on and on and on. And that's not creating value. And so I love right. pithy. <laughs> yes. I, problems. But how hard was it? We're salespeople. We like it's, to talk. It's ridiculously it hard. And, yeah. and and in fact, one of my clients yesterday, I um I was typing as she was speaking. And so I we ended up with almost like a half a page of notes that she she wanted to say them all, all of that. And I said, okay, give me bullet points. And so she's like, we ended up with two bullet points. And and we had filled a half a page. And she's like, That's wow. That was, those were lots of words. I'm like, yeah. And guess yeah. what? The prospect isn't going to listen to all that. That's so. a good, that's a great, that's a great practice. So I, I and I, when I had sales teams and that way I taught myself to, and like when I started reading stuff, I started trying to just revamp how I did things in general. I started saying, if I can't put it in a bullet and it didn't exist, yes. right. It, it's not even, it doesn't matter because it, when you put in a bullet in your mind, you automatically start to shorten. Because it's a bullet, yes, you do. it's not a sentence, it's not a paragraph. If a bullet turns into a paragraph, that means you're an attorney and you're doing things on terms and conditions. And I'm yes. not an attorney. No. So the end of that. So like literally you bullet. So I would teach my people how to send emails, would say, hey, nice meeting you, blah, blah. Here's the things we talked about, bullet one, two, and three. And then, and so, and also now, thank you. This next steps are bullet one and two, whatever that is. And then this is our next meeting time, whatever. It forced them to structure an email. And that's the other thing that drives me nuts is people drive, people can't write emails. I don't understand why. Like, whoa, like or use punctuation, it's a page and a half. use grammar, use like paragraphs. That's why they exist. Mm -hmm. use bullets when needed, but it's like they use crayon and that you can't. And so back to presentation and presentation is everything back to pitch it. It's everything. Yes. I love if it. you ever watched like the Steve Jobs movie, I think that was so well done that taught me that it doesn't even matter if he had a product because he didn't at one point. It was just in how he presented. He was able to, he made a big deal about the exit sign light being on. He's like, it's going to ruin everything. Turn off the light. They're like, it's against the law. I don't care. The presentation has to be flawless. I love it. Okay. So com competition. So yes. do you feel like it's today pretty neck and neck amongst the three finalists? Yes. Um, so when we did the preliminaries, um, we based it off of a uh, popular vote for one. So the audience, which were MSPs voted. Um, and then we also had uh, 
judges and they were from uh, mostly from ConnectWise, a couple and a couple PE firms also too, um, that were always known how they, they know how to address talent from developers perspective, growth perspective, um, how well will they play with others perspective kind of stuff. I mean, there was all these different things and they had a, they had a grading system and all three finalists, they all scored within the top five of all 18 of them within all categories from all judges. So it's kind of like, you know, really, it almost becomes an opinion as to how somebody mm. went at that point because they were also neck and neck. You know, it's just basically like, I just like how they said that better, you know, kind of like that. Um, so yeah, there's, there, there's not, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I there's honestly, no shoe in. It's not there, on. There's not. And I'm so glad I'm not a judge. And I made it clear. And, and they all laugh. All the contestants laugh the whole time. So I'm like, I'm so glad that I'm not part of this decision making because I can't do it. I don't, I'm just unbiased. I can just hang out and help you guys where you need it. And I'm done. And they, I'm, I am glad, honestly, I couldn't do it. Okay. So one more time, we're here talking about Pitch It and Pitch It is going, it, it is a Shark Tank style incubator program for newer to the channel uh, vendors. And so yep. they will, the finalists, the three finalists are going to be presenting on the first day of IT Nation Connect in Orlando, November 9th, okay. 3 p.m. Eastern. Okay. We will have drinks too, by the way. Aha. Uh -huh. What's what's the do you know the website? I'll drop that on the screen. Is it itnationconnect.com? Yeah. yeah, I'll send it. I'll I can give it to you. Or you can drop it in the chat. Drop I will. it in the chat. Yes, <clears throat> I, I mean I'm up on it all the time. So yes, just copy paste. That'll work. So okay. I'll I'll put the actual I will put the IT Nation Connect website there first off. So you have it. Okay. Good. Excellent. So you do that and I will, I'll make sure that shows up in chat because I'm not seeing it, but maybe it went oh, elsewhere. Nope. I didn't post it yet. And I okay. can't post publicly. I can only do private with you. So I just put it in your private. So I just gave right, it to you well, in private. I will post it in the chat and then I will also put it on the screen. How about that? Good. That's a good, that's a great idea. I yes. like that. Teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. Okay. So uh -huh. get your tickets. Um, it's in about a month, a little less than a month, actually. <laughs> Quite it's, 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 it's in a few weeks, literally. Ooh. Um, it is like I told you when I got on, I, this is the first time I ever prepped with them for this. And wow, there's the amount of effort to go. If anybody doesn't get something out of this, they just didn't pay attention. They didn't try this, this whole event. I just gave you the pitch at link also. So if you Got want to put it. that up there, we are accepting applications for next year already. Um, I like it. Yeah, we, uh, I would suggest apply no matter what, like you said, who should apply if they're startup companies, you know who you are, just apply. Yes. You know, it, worst case scenario, like I said, you get told, no, you don't qualify for it because whatever. Right. Yeah. But otherwise, if you ask and if you watch, there's, we've been on a lot of different webinars and, and the contestants have been very much, very vocal about it. They will tell you about the amount of experiences that they got from what they learn during the course of it, you know, and, and, and they're, they're grateful. It was, it was a good investment for them for their time. That's awesome. And of the 18 vendors that were in it, that were in it, 10 of them are sponsoring at IT Nature Connect. Amazing. So, okay. So I love that because I teach my clients to make sure you're, you're giving back to your community, which is, this is the epitome of giving back to the community. And you don't know that these will all become massive companies someday that could be the, the, you know, the platinum plus sponsor at IT Nation Connect you, in three years you know. or being ripe for acquisition. That's not what this is about. This is about serving the community. And that it is. pays dividends. So I okay, love it. It does. And we all serve each other. The thing is, well, let me, let's, let's make it very easy. If you're an MSP and if you have the chance to talk to a vendor as they're starting out, you tend to have a little more influence yes. on how they go. So why wouldn't you take advantage of that? Just a simple yeah. thought, just a, just a thought, you know, I mean, I'm not saying you can, I'm not saying you can influence any of them, but that's typically what happens. And these, and, and 10 of 18 that's sponsored that are going to be there. And actually 11 would be Sassio, but they'll be there with OPIC anyway. So it doesn't even matter. Right. Um, and, and so you, you can be part of this and, and they're willing to reinvest, which was nice. They all, it, it, the only ones that didn't, weren't able to really do it were people that were overseas that couldn't make it. 
That's right. like, we had a few that I, I actually, I think one of them is coming. I think one of them did sponsor, but that's the thing is like, there were good reasons why they weren't. Was it because okay, they didn't so, want to? It was good reasons. So, so last last thing I want to ask you about the prep. Um, a big part of sales is objection handling or diffusing objections, ideally in advance. So, in the case of Shark Tank, you have to assume the judges, the crowd of potential clients, partners, everybody's got some degree of skepticism. You know, whether it's you know they they say then you know oh there's going to yeah. be this feature that's going to give you this benefit. You yeah. know, there's people in the crowd going yeah right or mm, color me a little skeptical or yeah. I've heard that before. So was that something that you believe the coaches worked on with with these three? So partners? yeah. It's, you know, it comes back to the best defense is a good offense, right? Yes. So instead of worrying about objection handling first, you should be presenting as if you're handling the objections already, right? Because typically see. objections are usually what you find in FAQs, right? You already know what they're going to be. Yes. So what you, if you do your job right, right? I mean, it's different than if you launch day one, you hear the, at the first conversation, that's different, right. right? But if you're, if you're, if you're good at what you do and you pay attention, you're already filling out this FAQ. That that's also what you that that helps you to build your your presentation, right? So you know right away questions are you know SLA downtime depending on what you do, right? Or or what's the actual use case scenario? You know what's the efficiency rate? So like depending on what your product is and what your solution is, right? You kind of should know those answers. So in your presentation, you should be you should be upfront. It's an upfront contract in a presentation, of course, just like your sales. Now, yes, so yes, they are helping them with that part on the presentation aspect first. And helping them to answer the questions on the back end as well, because you're right. No matter how good the presentation is, there's still, especially a, a presentation that's not catered to you specifically, because it's not a sales call with a presentation. They're just on stage presenting. It is um, there, so there's going to be questions, and that's why, like I, they, they are working with them on it. So I welcome everybody to go see them at their booths because we do have. They will be part of Startup Alley, which is we created it for them basically. Um, they'll all be there. So you'll be able to come and ask them the questions you want to ask. Don't hesitate or be there for the workshops for the finalists. Why not? Amazing. I love it. So excited to see them live and in person. And you and I are going to be talking to each of the finalists over the next couple of weeks. So yes. be watching social media for that. We'll be sharing that information on social media. If you do not have your ticket yet to IT Nation Connect, I just put the link on the screen again for those of you who are maybe listening. Don't look at the screen if you're driving. It's connectwise.com slash the IT Nation or just Google the IT Nation. Just Google Google IT Nation Connect and you'll find it. Right up. Probably yes. four different versions of that page will pop up. Correct. <laughs> and, At least. And Sean, you'll be there. I'll be there. I've got a session on Friday I that know. I'm super excited about, um, about your sales operating system. It's called SOS, your sales operating system. And if you have not <laughs> upgraded your SOS in a while, um, you're going to very quickly be screening SOS because you're going to need some help. So I'm going to help you inside of that, that exact 45-minute uh, session. We're going to help you upgrade your SOS. So I love that. I, it's I, I mean, I actually just had a conversation uh, right before this call. I was having a conversation about MSP's growth and how to differentiate what salespeople should be doing for them as opposed to what they think they what they should be doing, and what they think they should be doing. Yes, <laughs> uh, you know, um, and you know, the, and the conversation was wrapped around: Did you ever really think about what their real title is and their real responsibility? And because that changes everything. Yes, it does. It changes their compensation package. It changes the resources they need to do their job. It also aligns them with understanding what their job is. So at least that's there, you know? So I, you I know who to hire. I mean, you don't know who to hire if you don't know what they're going to be doing for you. So no. yes. I mean, I can imagine you talk to them all the time about sales. How many, how many of them say, I'm just going to hire a salesperson to do what? Sell stuff. Yes. And then it's I like, had a conversation with one of my clients Tuesday. He said, it's time. I need to hire a salesperson. And I said, okay, show me the job posting. I don't have one. Why not? Well, I'm not sure what he or she should do. And I'm like, aha. So there, we need to start there. Uh -huh. That's, and it, and it, I find a lot of times they end up becoming like an appointment setter. Yes. Yeah. Because like, I'm going to close the deal. Sometimes the owner isn't ready to give up sales. Sometimes the owner can't yeah. transfer that sales knowledge and salesmanship from self to team member. Um, yeah. yeah. 
So lots of challenges to solve for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm stoked about everything. I am too. This is going to be super shaving my beard. I had to yes. shave my beard. Yeah. Okay. So we have four or five minutes. Tell us about the beard shaving. <sighs> so yeah, I'm sighing. Um, so there are a handful of us that are in the space. Matt Lee was uh, him and Ian. Uh, they were the genesis of this brainchild that we're doing a charity event. Um, and the I'm goal is to the raise... URL. I noticed you're not sharing that one with me, but I got you covered. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we don't hit the money, we don't have to shave. That's what I was told. But, um, you know, we have several charities that we're donating to from this. So we're looking, we're still looking for sponsors. I'll even give you my GoFundMe link. I'll send it over to you now because why not? Um, and so the, you know, the goal is to, to, we're looking to raise a hundred thousand dollars and we have up until connect to get this done. Um, I mean, we'll still be doing it there. And over the course of connect, we, and, and this is, and again, back to connect wise given to the community. Um, they, uh, Oh, this wasn't that a connect is- initiative. It wasn't a connect yeah. initiative yeah. first, you know? And, and so Andrea Barrow, which she's a good friend of mine now, she works, she works with me on pitch it. She's the, she runs, she actually runs our event program and she's also on the philanthropy team. So she's like everything. Um, I don't know how she does it all, honestly, but she, uh, I got her involved and she got us to the point where connect wise, actually we gave away free booth space to them. We're actually gonna have a barbershop set up. I and, love it. You, and you know how much it costs to sponsor our conference. So yes. did that for free. Also donated fifteen thousand dollars to the charities. I like um, it. And you've got women who code, hackers yeah. for vets, bike walk Wichita. I mean, there's a bunch of different causes. Yes. I mean, how close are you to your goal? Do you know? Uh, seven, we're a little over seventy grand right now. Okay, and you've got to get to a hundred. Yes, I think we should okay. get more than that. Honestly, uh, there's plenty of money out there. And by the way, for people that pay a certain amount, they actually get their name put out. So, um, if you're looking to if you're looking to get some extra coverage and marketing, you know, you may want to donate more than a thousand or five thousand dollars. And I like you, it. And we're gonna put you on signage, and you're gonna get a lot of attention. Just saying. Although I think somebody should sponsor name badges because once Sean Lardo shaves his face, no one's going to know who you are. Once Matt Lee shaves, oh like you weren't going to know who these people are, even though you're all like tried and true people in the channel. I don't know what you look like without a beard. <laughs> Man, Jason Slagle, I've known him for years. I saw him without a beard. And none of you have. He's not, <laughs> he's an odd looking guy. And I'll tell him he's odd looking without the beard. He needs the beard. I think we all need the beard <laughs> to be honest, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen here. I'm not oh, sure. how. I, it's going to be horrifically amazing. We only need, so we only need 25 people to each give a thousand dollars. That, yeah, that yeah. should be so doable. You're telling me, I agree. So all you people that say you're my friend. Okay thousand dollars all Even right for, I'm, I'm for you and your other friends with five hundred dollars in you know hey again it's for you know for me it's it's pretty important not i mean i'm, I'm sacrificing my beard uh but like i'm a veteran so hackers for vets is very it's something close to me women in code i have four daughters yeah i always want them to do this stuff i want them to be i i want these uh, you know, I want everybody to have a, ch- a fair chance if they if they want it. That's for sure. Like, yeah. I don't want to force anybody on the path of doing things, but I, you know, access to things is important, and these 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 groups have done that. So, love it. It's kind amazing. of amazing. All right, cannot wait to see that. When is the shaving going to happen? So it's going to happen uh, over the course of a couple of days. Okay. Um, because Veterans Day is on the on the eleventh. Right. So I'll be getting shaved on the 11th. Okay. Especially the people that people really want to see get shaved. We're like saving the last, last for the, the best for last sure. kind of. So like, like the people that are notorious or infamous would be like me, Matt and Jason Slagle. We yeah. know we're infamous. So people are like chopping at the bid to watch us look worse. Um, and the fact that I'm a veteran just adds to it. So it's like, so we'll be shaving on Thursday and we haven't put the full schedule out, but it will be out. And Excellent. the booth is actually, I, I believe it's right in the lobby. 
across from where the solution building is. So everybody will be able to see it. It's not like it's like a small room in the back somewhere. It is literally right there. Right in front. I love yes. it. Amazing. All right. So pitch it. Um, be watching social media. Sean and I are going to talk to all of the pitch it finalists and coaches and get that behind the scenes sneak peek into everything that happened up until that moment. And then mm -hmm. get your ticket to ConnectWise. Let me drop that link one more time. Um, get your get your ticket to IT Nation. And you can come watch the three companies compete live. And we didn't even talk about the grand prize. What's the grand prize? We'll end with that. So grand prize, uh, they get some free booth stuff first off, which is sure. nice there. Um, but $70,000 is first place. Yes. Second place is 30,000. So Amazing. they, so even say, so, and, and, and the more that show up to this, the more traction we get, the more willing connect wise is to maybe offer more in the future. That's the goal. Um, hint, hint. Yes, hint, hint, people with imposter syndrome, get your application in as well. And I'm going to say women, because women have a real challenge with imposter syndrome. You do not have to have it all together to put in your name for Pitch It. Um, I, I have no vested interest. I don't work for ConnectWise. I don't work for Pitch It, but I love women business owners. So you wouldn't say I'm not going to join the gym until I'm in shape. So don't say I'm not going to join Pitch It till I have it all figured out. Join Pitch It so that you can get things figured out. Agreed. Well said. Couldn't. I love it. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time. I will talk to you very soon. Thank you. Bye. Take care.